back in the day, when you bought a PC in the 80s, 90s, they had a thing called a front side bus. This is, you know, when I went to university, we learned about bus based computers because that's generally what computers were. And that is you had this sort of thing that ran along, for lack of a better term, the middle of the computer and everyone shared it. If a CPU needed to talk to memory, it would talk via the bus. Hence the name bus is like jumping on the bus to get somewhere. If a CPU needed to talk to disk, if CPU needed to talk to network, if anything needed to talk to each other, it worked along the bus. So the bus was the bottleneck for just about everything in your system. And that's why computers generally ran pretty slow back in those days. No matter how the CPU technology and memory technology got better, you were limited by the bus speed. AMD, saviors of the universe. No, not a sponsored post for AMD. Invented a thing called hypertransport, which was the concept of attaching some memory directly to CPU, such that CPUs could at least access a subset of memory incredibly fast. And also they improved the, the communication lines between those CPUs using this thing called hypertransport. That's why, oh, this would be what, early 2000s? Do you remember Opterons? Opteron servers were the absolute bee's knees when it came to running databases. They absolutely flew. They were using AMD chips. Intel said, that's, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, and obviously, we came to the Nahalem architecture, this uh, circa 2007, so it's been around for a long time. And the concept is very similar. Fast connections between CPUs and memory being aligned with CPUs to access it very, very fast. To prove that to you, we now know that hardware is just crazy fast for good code. So let's look at an example of what I mean by that. Let's prove to you how fast hardware is. I'm creating to my local database here. I'm creating a table, just a very simple table with an integer date and some varchar two. I'll run some code to see how many rows per second I can pump into this table on this little baby laptop. Hopefully the timing is about right here. It's hard to guess how long this will take because I'm obviously running parallel streaming and recording the session. But this laptop, about 1,200 rows per second. That's not too shabby, but obviously it's a laptop. Let's now connect. You can see the top line there. I'm connecting to a service here called Aura underscore cloud. Maybe a bit more um, juice behind the scenes. Create the same table, run the same demo. Let it run for a while. And now this time I'm getting, wait for it to finish. Obviously something significantly better. I'm getting 24,000 or 25,000 rows per second. And obviously we can take these things to extremes. I'm connected to a new thing called ExaCloud and same table, run the same code and let's give it a run. And now that I'm connecting to that, I'm getting a million rows per second. Now, at which point you're going, that's all well and good, Connor, but what on earth is ExaCloud gonna cost me in terms of fees, licenses, etc. I can't just keep throwing bigger and bigger chunks of hardware at things. Well, let's look at the TNS names to Aura file on this machine. You can see that DB18 PDB1 is local host 1518. It's this laptop. Aura Cloud is, guess what? This laptop, local host 15. And Extra Cloud is, yes, this laptop as well, local host 1518. I didn't change any hardware. I simply changed the quality of the code that I was running. And yes, this three year old $800 laptop can put in a million rows per second into an Oracle database. Hardware is just ridiculously good nowadays. My point is great code always wins. Great code trumps any kind of hardware. If you write great code, you can write incredibly cool and fast applications. I, 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 I,